Hello, hello everyone, Susie Hatton here. It is a icy mix of slush and grossness out today, so I've decided to cancel my patients and just stay home and enjoy my day off. Not really, because I'm always working doing something, but it's nice to stay home and be with my kitties and just try to relax. So I recently started getting into the true crime documentary of Diane Schuler. And anybody that doesn't know that story, just YouTube her name. You'll find every single video under the sun about theories and conspiracies of what happened. In summary, Diane Schuler went camping with her husband and her daughter and her son and her brother's three daughters, so her nieces, one weekend upstate in New York. On the way home, the husband took the dog in his truck and Diane took her children and her nieces in what was her brother's truck. So it was the father of the three girls. It was their truck. And on their way home, they stopped at a McDonald's. They stopped at a gas station. Diane was looking for some Tylenol gel caps, which they didn't have. All the attendants at the McDonald's and the gas station said Diane seemed fine. After those two stops, eyewitnesses say that Diane started driving erratically. She pulled over several times on the highway to be sick. She started driving really erratically. At one point in time, she left her phone on the side of the highway. She then continued on to enter a highway uh, the wrong way, and which led to the fatal crash, killing herself, her daughter, her three nieces, and three men in an oncoming car. When they did the autopsy of Diane, it was discovered that her blood alcohol content was 0.19, which is the equivalent of 10 drinks, and her THC level was, I think, 113 which is, an, is not only an extremely high amount of cannabis in somebody's system, but it proves that actually she had consumed it within an hour before her death. On the way home several times, Diane's niece called her father and her mother. I'm not sure if uh, she had her own phone or if she used Diane's phone. It's not clear about that, but when the first time the daughter called her father, she said everything was fine, but they were running late. After that, she called her mother and she sounded worried. She said, something's wrong with Aunt Diane. She can't see. And Jackie, the girl's mother, heard in the background her other daughter crying. But then Diane got on the phone and said, oh, they're just playing. She kind of like downplayed the whole situation. And again, they went on their way. Of course, the mother of the three girls, Jackie, she was very worried at this point. And at one point in time, the girl's father, Warren, also got on the phone with Diane, who was then talking very incoherently and he said, don't go anywhere, I'm gonna come and get you. And that's when Diane left her phone on the side of the highway and continued her fatal route. So what struck me as really odd, and I just felt compelled to share this, was when the daughter, Emma, got on the phone with her mother, Jackie, and said, something's wrong with Aunt Diane, she can't see, and the other girl was crying, in the background and then Diane gets on the phone and says everything's fine they're just playing in my opinion that is a scenario almost like the girls are being held hostage so I feel like in her own way Emma the daughter was trying to relay to her mother just how panicked she actually was but she didn't want to piss off her aunt, Diane, because her aunt Diane possibly at that point had already threatened them. So let's say for whatever reason, unbeknownst to anybody, Diane just snapped and threatened to kill everybody in the car. Something like, if you girls don't shut up, I'm gonna kill you all. I'm gonna just drive this 
fan off a cliff and just kill us all, right? So let's say that happened. Let's say that something like that kind of conversation happened. Then there's the girl on the phone with her mother trying to relay to her mother that there's really something wrong. But at the same time, she's petrified to let on that something is really wrong. The fact that the other daughter was crying in the background, like that would set off major, major, major alarm bells. And I know that they really did try to get to Diane, but Diane then just left her phone on the side of the road, like making it virtually impossible to find them at all. So I don't know why Diane would want to kill all these little girls. Um, a lot of people say that Diane was very unhappy, that she did drink a lot, that she apparently did smoke a lot, that she didn't have a very good relationship with her husband. Her husband actually barely even knew her because they hardly spent any time together. They had opposite shift work schedules. They only really spent any time together at the at this campground that they would go to on the weekends. And so that's the theory that the husband really didn't know her or perhaps maybe he did know her and he just didn't want the public to have this horrible perception of his wife. He didn't want his only surviving son to have this horrible perception of, of his mother who was now passed away. But I really believe now in my heart that Diane threatened possibly her own children and definitely her nieces threatened to kill them and they were petrified, scared for their life. When Emma got on the phone with her mother, Jackie, she was trying to relate to her, <clears throat> you know, something is wrong with Aunt Diane and then Diane got on, getting on the phone and saying everything's okay and they're just playing. And then the other girl's crying. She possibly got more pissed off after Emma called her mother. From what I understand, there were several wrong numbers called around this time. So possibly Emma was trying to remember her own phone number. You know how kids are, they don't remember their the phone numbers of their parents or anybody for that matter. So maybe she was trying to get a hold of, of her mom and she finally like figured out how to search up her mom in Diane's phone and she, she got in touch with her. But I can imagine from, from what I do know about Diane, she was extremely private. She was the kind of woman that seemingly was very put together with a lot of energy, a very hands-on good mom. For Emma to expose Diane about something being wrong with her, that probably really set her off. Knowing what little that I do know about Diane, that she was extremely controlling and private, to have that be exposed was just like flipped a switch in her. Like she, she went crazy. She probably threatened the girls, maybe before that conversation, but definitely after, I believe. And she made good on her word that she was gonna kill them. And that's exactly what she did. And that's really the only thing, because from what I know of pot, it does not make you murder people. In fact, I, from what I know of pot, it does the absolute opposite. It chills you out. So for her to be so enraged that she gets on a highway the wrong way and is laser focused driving straight into oncoming traffic without even attempting to stop, that's, that's a suicide murder right there. That's like a murder attempt. Like I'm gonna kill all of you and this is how I'm gonna do it. And you know what? I'm just gonna kill myself as well because I'm so freaking unhappy in my life from what I understand about everything that I've watched and read. So that's that's very, very scary. And I totally agree with the family of the men that were killed, how they are saying that the fact that Diane's husband and Diane's um, husband's sister are just like vehemently deny 
that Diane was drunk or high or anything like that. Like that's just perpetuating the tragedy here. Like you're not even admitting that she was a drunk and that she had rage within her. And this is very scary because these girls, you know, I know that there was a foundation out in the name of the girls to give young girls self-esteem. And I wonder if a part of that is, well, perhaps if the girls had more self-esteem, have the um, drive and will to like get on the phone with their mother or father and say, come pick us up now. I'm really super scared. Like Diane is really driving crazy. She's really scaring us. Like we need help. Come and get us daddy. Come and get us mommy. You need to help us. Please help us, you know? But instead, it's like the way that they were talking to, to their parents after everything that Diane had already done, according to eyewitnesses, it's like they were just too petrified to come out and say how they really felt. They were petrified of Diane. They didn't have enough courage to say how they really felt. Perhaps Diane wouldn't let them out of the car. You know, maybe one of the times that they were stopped on the side of the road, Diane tried, uh, the girls tried to get out and Diane locked the, locked the car, like didn't let them out. Like, we don't know. We'll never know what happened, really. But I feel like it was a case of Diane's controlling nature snapped in the face of being discovered and she committed murder. She intentionally killed herself and everyone in the car which is extremely scary and very, very sad. Uh, Warren is the father and their last name is Hans. So they made like a Hans foundation to, to bring self-esteem to young girls. And I'm really glad that they're doing that because more young people need to have the self-esteem to get themselves out of bad situation. I hope that they're able to help a lot of young girls and boys to gain enough confidence to stand up for what they believe is right. Anyway, thanks for listening. I just wanted to give my two cents, just like everyone else is on the internet here. And tell me what you think about my theory. I know it's very mm, murder mystery, kind of far-fetched psychological, but I, I really very much believe in my theory in this case. So I look forward to your comments. Have a wonderful, safe, happy, healthy Friday.